Welcome back to my classroom. This is Justin. Today I'm going to talk about a paired sample t test or related sample t test or different sample t test. There are so many names given for the particular test. So this objective of this particular test is to uh, compare performance of same group of people in different condition. Let us say a group of people in the pre-test condition and post-test condition. I think uh, in the field of psychology this will be an appropriate example. So let us say happiness before and after relaxation training, something like that. So uh, what is the hypothesis? We will take a null hypothesis here. Null hypothesis is, um, uh, I would say a research hypothesis would be uh, pre-test is equal to post-test okay and an alternative hypothesis would be uh, pretest is not equal to post test so if you want to make a specific uh, research hypothesis i mean i'm sorry um, statistical hypothesis uh, it should be like the post test score minus pretest score is equal to zero or post -test score minus pretest score is not equal to zero like that this is the original hypothesis statistical hypothesis that we can consider this can be a research hypothesis that means um, you have a value pretest minus score minus post -test score post -test score minus pretest score uh, is it equal to zero or not equal to zero maybe you may remember a similar kind of condition when we have done uh, one sample t test it's almost like a one sample t test itself let us imagine some scores now so you have a pretest condition here pretest and you have a post test condition post test like this okay and i'm just um, randomly going to write some values here that is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it's a pre-test happiness scores. So after the relaxation training, the post scores are 20, um, 20, uh, 21, 21, 22, 22. So I have um, six uh, samples, six, six element scores here before and after the intervention. So in the independent sample t-test, what we do is we find an average here, average here, and we compare these two averages. We don't consider the individual values here. But in the paired sample t-test, we don't do the, uh, the, the uh, average uh, comparison like that. Instead, we take each values as a pair, the set of pair like this. That means this is a scores of a person A. These are scores of person B like that. Each uh, pair data will be treated as pair itself. So what we do is we find out a D value. D value is a difference value. That means after intervention, how much scores are gained, how much scores are changed. Uh, so I'm just taking post-test minus pre-test condition. You can also take pre-test minus post-test, any of these things works. So post-test minus pre-test, the scores are, uh, here is a five, it's four, it's four, um, it is uh, three, and uh, it is uh, uh, again um, three here and it's two here so these are the scores here so i have a d value now i'm go not going to use any of the scores uh, the original scores here i'm going to use this d value so this d is same as this post test minus pre test that means d is equal to or not equal to zero so originally the hypothesis is d equal to zero or d is not equal to zero like that okay it's a two-tailed hypothesis because d can be um, greater than zero or d can be lesser than zero so what I, what I do is average of D will be calculated uh, and I will work with that data. Now, let us uh, go to the equation now. So fundamental equation of a t-test is um, the sample mean uh, minus the population mean mu uh, divided by standard error that is um, standard deviation uh, of the sample divided by root n. Now, in this context, the sample mean is D value that means uh, the D okay, mean uh, minus zero that means population minus zero i'm just trying to check whether d is significantly different from zero like that okay so i can ignore this part actually divide by uh, standard deviation of d that's d uh, root n root n is how many values we have one two three six six observations here like that so the mean of d i have calculated before this is 3.5 the standard deviation of this d value is 1.05 divided by root 6 the score is 8.17 so this is a t value okay now uh, the score is uh, 8 the t value is 8.17 that means um, uh, thus if no, the null hypothesis is true the chance to get a difference of 3.5 this difference okay 3.5 is um, 8.17 standard deviation away from the 
condition that means let us draw this uh, in a t curve itself then the explanation would be much more easier uh, so this is a t curve okay and the center point is um, zero that means t value is zero okay and the degree of freedom of this curve is uh, is n minus one that means you have six observation that means six minus one you have five okay so um, in this context um, the center point is zero my t value is 8.17 so it would be somewhere here 8.17 let's say 8.17 standard deviation away from the mean okay now what i would be doing is i will calculate how much uh, area is here so i have calculated that the area is 0 0.00045 something like that so this is the p value so this tells me um, if uh, the chance to uh, get a value a difference of 3.5 okay this different value 3.5 um, if um, the null hypothesis is true if um, there is no difference between pretest and post test is uh, this much uh, chance that means in, this is a proportion value in terms of the percentage uh, 0.4045 percentage chance to occur a value like this get a value like 3.5 if uh, these pretest and posters are same such a small chance for that to occur so i would say that there are much evidence for uh, the uh, alternative hypothesis to be ac to accept than the null hypothesis so i would reject the null hypothesis and i would go for i will suggest the alternative hypothesis so this side and this side both okay this side together 0.045 percentage considering this side and this side and this plus side and this minus side so if you are working with a um, one tailed hypothesis you just need to consider one side of it half of it has to be considered so that you can uh, make the judgment now what if uh, you are not uh, um, in a position to really calculate the area under this curve what else you do generally when you do a manually when you do the calculation of a t-test you decide first the confidence interval or level of significance so the alpha value that you can keep first itself as the basic level 0 0.05 that means five percentage uh, error extreme possibilities are that that means 95 percentage confidence interval you keep that means this could be the 95 percentage confidence interval okay now if the uh, for a degree of freedom 5 the 95 percentage cutoff will be uh, let us say here and uh, somewhere here the value tend to be 2. Uh, 2.57 i have written down that value this is minus 2.57 okay this much area that means 2.5 percentage and this much area 2.5 percentage together you have 5 percentage that indicates 0 0.05 level of significance okay this much area so if your value the t value that you calculate is beyond it or beyond it you will say that hey there's a the chance to this happen is lesser than 0 0.05 level so i make a judgment that that's a rare possibility what if you go for a little more harder 99 percentage confidence interval so this line will be much more bigger so you'll have a cutoff point somewhere here and this cutoff point somewhere here that means 99 percentage confidence here 0.5 here and 0.5 here that means together one percentage that means 99 percentage confidence interval and one percentage here okay now this value tend to be 4.03 this particular value minus 4.03 here the value would be minus 4.03 so if your value is the t value that you calculate it is greater than uh, minus 4 po or here is plus okay minus or plus 4.03 uh, then you make a judgment that a chance to uh, chance to um, get a value like that if uh, the if there's no difference between pretest and process that means null hypothesis is true if null hypothesis is true chance to get a value like that uh, is um, lesser than uh, 0.01 that means that's a very rare chance so i got a value like that so that means these two groups are two different values that means there is a significant difference between pre-test and post-test so this is how we do uh, a paired sample t-test paired sample t-test is one of the very powerful tests actually now uh, what are the assumptions of paired sample t-test 
as usual every uh, t-test you have a common assumption that uh, the sample has to be uh, normally distributed so which value has to be normally distributed you have pre-test value process value no none of these values actually d has to be normally distributed okay because we are working with the d value here this are way in which we uh, rework on the equation so d scores has to be normally distributed and the second assumption is um, the scores has to be independent that means um, definitely pre-test and post -test scores are dependent pair data the independence means inside the d that means inside the observation the scores has to be independent you don't need to work with d here it is okay to work with the pre-test and post -test. the scores inside each column each column the so 15 16 17 18 19 20 these scores has to be independent same way post test inside this scores has to be dependent uh, independent 15 and 20 definitely are dependent data other one is a controversy kind of uh, assumption that is uh, the scores has to be randomly selected every textbook it is written like uh, the su subject has to be selected randomly otherwise paired sample t-test cannot be used or um, even it independent sample t-test or one sample t-test cannot be used so normality normality of the d value and uh, uh, the um, the other assumption is uh, about the independence and other assumption is about random observation and there should be many extreme scores here okay these are the uh, assumptions common assumptions of paid sample t-test okay that's it um, uh, generally uh, what kind of questions can be asked um, maybe in case study kind of things um, assumptions can be asked or um, you may get a uh, uh, what do you call um, degree of freedom that is n minus 1 degree of freedom here is n minus 1 how many observation you don't consider uh, pre-test plus post -test n because uh, these two are same person so degree of freedom here the n here is 6 n is 6 you don't calculate n 6 plus 6 12 not like that so you have 6 observations here 6 minus 1 uh, that is uh, 5 is a degree of freedom in this context like that um, you may get degree of freedom and you may be asked to calculate the sample size and or you may get the sample size and you are asked to calculate the degree of freedom any of these things can work so assumption degree of freedom or you get this d values and the standard error values of the d and you may be asked to calculate t value all these things can is generally possible so these are the kind of questions can be asked from the paid sample t-test area that's it. Bye from my classroom. See you in the next class.